the ears never get past the head. Once upon a time, there lived a family in a village near the large forest. The head of the family is called Tatu, father, Kabango. He had a wife called Mamu, mother, Mienda, and they had two sons, Chiswaka, the elder, and Malumba, the younger. Tatu Kabango cared so much about his son's education. He wanted them to learn with courage hunting, fishing, and gathering. In addition, he wanted them to grow up with good morals. He always counseled them whenever they were up to mischief. As time went on, the two children grew up and wanted to become independent. Therefore, Chiswaka and Malumba, his brother, decided to leave home. Chiswaka married a beautiful woman called Lawina, about 800 kilometers from his village, and had children. Malamba moved to the east near the river where he married Kaya, and they also had children. The two boys became responsible men. They worked hard for the survival of their families and were the envy of other villagers. This made them to become very proud. One day Tatu Kabango their father got up and went to see his eldest son Chiswaka. After taking his bag and his gun, he set off and traveled a long distance to get to the village where his eldest son lived. When he got there, he was welcomed with great joy. They prepared a good meal for him and he went to bed and rested. Two months after Tatu Kabango had been staying with his son, something very shocking happened. Shaswaka returned from hunting and when he got home, he found his father sitting under a mango tree. His wife was late in preparing dinner. Suddenly Chiswaka raised the machete and cut off the head of his wife. Make it stand out. Seized with panic, his father asked him, Why did you do that? Chiswaka looked at his father and said, Father, do not be afraid, I did not do anything wrong. A moment after Chiswaka cut his wife's head off, he put it back on her neck and the woman was revived and continued preparing dinner. The next morning the father returned home after seeing the miracle of his first son. A few days later the father decided to visit his second son. He set off to the village in which his second son Malumba lived. When Tatu Kabango arrived at Malumba's home, he was received very warmly. The whole family ate and talked excitedly together. The next day, he and Malumba went fishing. They brought back plenty of fish, which they gave to his wife to celebrate the arrival of Tatu Kabango. After this welcome, while resting, Tatu Kabango saw his son call his wife and children into his hut and then set the hut on fire. His children, his wife, and all his possessions were consumed by fire. His father was very terrified. This reminded him of the events that had occurred in her first son Chiswaka's house. Tatu Kabango, very confused, asked his son, But, what are you doing? Why did you do such a thing? Malumba answered his father, saying, Father, there is nothing. Only the flesh is weak, but do not fear. A few minutes later, the fire died down and surprisingly, the box that was in the fire did not burn. What magic! exclaimed Tatu Kabango as the wife and children came out of the box safe and sound. Tatu Kabango came to his senses and kept his cool. The next day he returned to his village and did not mention what happened in his son's house to anyone. But he continued to wonder where his children got their power? A few months after, after much contemplation, he decided to send for his two sons to come and visit him. They decided to honor the invitation and visit their parents since they had not gone back home in a long time. When they arrived, 
Their mother made them a feast like the old days with great joy because she had not seen the children for a long time. Tatu Kabango, who was a great hunter, asked his children to go hunting with him. They took shotguns and Tatu Kabango forgot the machete at home. Halfway to their destination, Tatu Kabango asked one of his sons Chiswaka to go back and bring the machete. When Chiswaka got close to their house, he met his father lying on the ground, dead, with his mother wailing. Chiswaka tried to convince the villagers that his father was back in the forest, in fact he was the one who sent him back to bring the machete, but no one listened to him. Chiswaka quickly ran into the forest and told him all that he saw at home. His father began to smile and asked Malumba his second son to go and fetch the machete from the house. When he got there, he was met with the same situation as his brother. He also tried to convince the whole village that their father was still alive, but everybody also treated him like a sorcerer. He also returned to tell his father the same. Finally, the father told them to go home. When they arrived at the village, they found that the court was quiet, their mother was in the kitchen, everything was normal. Both sons then remembered the shows they had done to their father and they touched their head. They were so ashamed, and they told their mother what they had done to their father and asked for forgiveness. So, their father concluded by saying to them, You did all this to scare me, but I showed you that your children and ears never get past the head. The End Thanks like and subscribe